Tell me then everything you know about this place. Oh, it's no? Cretaceous. You get really dirty. Oh, it's Cretaceous. I love it. <laughs> you do get dirty here, that's for certain. What do we find here? Fossils, yes. Do you remember how old those fossils are? Mm -mm. No? Do you remember what else was alive when these fossils were alive? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, yeah. And sharks. And sharks, yep. Even the dinosaurs that swim. Even the dinosaurs that swim, yep. We've we've had some evidence of those too. So welcome to Hill Annex Mine State Park. How long have you been here before? I, I have. Okay. Um, my name is John. I'm with the Science Museum of Minnesota, and I do work for the Science Museum, but not as a researcher. So we are actually volunteer researchers. We do this on our own time. And we're researching the Cretaceous soils of Minnesota. So those soils that were deposited here during the time of the dinosaurs. And we actually have these soils under more than half of the state. But the problem is, is they're usually way down underground. So if we get over by North Dakota, the Cretaceous soils are like 800 feet below the surface. Nobody really digs holes that deep. And in this area, uh, along the Masabi Iron Range, the mining companies are digging big holes in the ground for this. Do you know what that is? This is iron. And a specific type of iron called hematite. So this is like 80 or 90 percent pure iron. You can go ahead and feel that. It's smooth, isn't it? Yeah, it's very smooth. Very smooth. And what else about it is different? Yeah. It's kind of heavy. It's kind of heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what are if things that are made out of iron, like a hammer or an anvil? Those things are heavy, aren't they? So that's where all the iron comes from that we make tools. There's another shiny black one. Oh, that's not very heavy. That's not very heavy at all. Why is that so different? Um, is that iron? It feels like plastic, kind of, almost, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a real rock. It's not a plastic rock. That's weird. Yeah, I can feel yeah. That's coal. You heard of coal before? So what do we use, what do we do with coal? You know? We can put it in a furnace, and it'll burn and generate heat. And trains use it. And trains use it, yep. So in the science descriptions of the coal-rain formation and all these Cretaceous soils, we do know that there are there is some coal that occurs in there naturally, and coal is made from fossilized plants. So that's actually feet and feet and feet of plants all pressed together and squished down underground, and it makes coal. So the only part of the plant that's left is all the carbon that was in there. But some of the coal also was brought in here from other states so that they could run the trains, because early when they started making this open pit iron mine, they hauled the dirt out of there with a train. They didn't use trucks yet. So some of the fossils that we find, have you ever heard of ammonites before? I think I have. You think? There's some pictures right here. You can look. An ammonite is a coiled shell. Yeah, I saw those right? before. And it has an animal like a squid that lives in the end. So it has tentacles. This is an example of an ammonite there. So that's a real fossil. It's not and heavy. And that's a cast, so it was, the ammonite shell was empty, and it filled in with sand, and that sand hardened to the same shape as the shell. So the original shell is long since gone, but we have what we call an internal cast or, of that. So one of the other things we find with ammonites are sutures. You ever heard that word before? No. No. They use that word when you, they, like, if you get a cut on your skin and you have to stitch it, that's called a suture. So it kind of looks like stitching. And you can see here in the ammonites, those little wavy lines, those are the sutures. So that's how each section of the ammonite shell is put together with different sutures. So these are what we find most of the time. Occasionally you'll find a chunk of ammonite that's larger that you can see the outside. 
So then we also find a bunch of shellfish. We find snails. We find mussels. We find oysters. And here's a bunch of oysters here. You're welcome to take a look at those. They're all pretty durable. There are some other clams and oysters here. Lots of different types of shellfish. These are all animals that live in the ocean. So where, how close is the ocean to us? Um, like that. Long ways, right? It take us like two days to drive to the ocean. So how did all these ocean animals get here? Mm -hmm. You suppose it looked different when the dinosaurs were here? Mm -hmm. It did. It looked a lot different. And actually we could stand here and we look west. This is west. All right, and we could be standing on a beach at the ocean and looking out over the ocean at the sunset, and on the other side of that ocean is the newly forming Rocky Mountains. So during the time of the dinosaurs, the water was much higher, and it cut North America in two. There's a picture here. You can see this is part of North America right there. That's the Rocky Mountains. You can see there's a great big ocean right through the middle of North America. Minnesota was part of that seashore. So we have both ocean animals and we have land animals like reptiles. So these are some reptile teeth right there. Let me finish rolling this back. We also have some fish parts. So these are fish vertebrae or the little bones that make up their spine. Some fish teeth. And we see lots of sharks. I found one of those. You did? My I found my first one. I heard you found one last year. So you're gunning for another shark tooth this year. Yeah, and I'm going to help her. She's my friend from school. I'm going to help her find a shark tooth. We'll help Grandma find we'll one. We'll do our best to see what we can do there. <laughs> so these shark's teeth here were actually collected here at Hill Annex. These ones are from a different mine that's on the Iron Range. Um, but they, we find shark's teeth all the way up and down on the Iron Range here. So. Oh, here is also, some of the shells are larger. There's a big one. It still has all the original shell material and the pearlescence in it. Don't find a lot of those. But we do find them. And I forgot to bring out the last thing, which is right here in my box. So not everything we find is small. This is just a copy. But this is the nose to a crocodile. So his nostrils would be out here, and you can see there's the holes where his teeth would go. There's even one tooth right here that is coming out. He was growing a new one. But that was found right here on this hill in 1967. But sometimes the bones come out big. Uh, in addition to that, last year, we don't have it here, but I have a picture. So this is in centimeters, this is about this big. But this is a, the bone in the end of the finger from a dinosaur. Oh, that's deep. It's not, it's not that big in real life. It's only about this big. <laughs> we, made, we put it on a poster board so everybody could see it better. Because we have like this one here. This is really small too, that's only about that big. But this shows that this is the skin from a crab right there. And we made a picture of this because we hadn't found crabs here before. So this was new for us last year. When we were fishing, we got a crab on our, on our hook and I was just like... On your hook? And that was green. <laughs> Alright, so what is your goal today? Find your friend a shark's tooth, right? Yeah? So if you find something or you want to come down and look at it again, but these are the shapes that we're looking for when we're out here in the hill. Okay? You ready to go look for something? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, we, everybody finds something. Most everybody found a fossil this morning. We had Yeah, look in one minute. Do you see anything that looks like those in there anywhere? Hmm. Yes. 
like right there and right there. <laughs> oh boy, you did well. Yeah. yeah, that suits you. That's a good one. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I'm usually the type of person if, there's no, if I don't have good luck, I got bad luck. Yeah. You know, usually it's bad luck. Thank you. Thank you.